This little lecturette has to do with values, service, purpose, relates to our unit in Management 300, leading for possibility. And we're going to start out with values and attitude. This lecturette will probably run in two or three segments. Feel free to hit the pause button if you want to stop the presentation and read a slide more carefully. First thing I want to talk about is the difference between instrumental values and end values. Most of this is based on the work by Rokic, who is a noted authority in the study of values. In a nutshell, instrumental values are those values you use to get where you want to go. For example, um, ambition, logic, forgiveness, honesty. It's part of the process, how you do what you do what values you use while you're doing this. End values are what you strive for, kind of like the goals or objectives, values that you aspire to. Some examples are wisdom or health, salvation, equality, something you will know that you've reached at the end of your life or along the way. In class, I like to have you do a forced choice, number in the order that is most valuable to you. So, so if loyalty is number one, obedience is number two, courage is number three, forgiveness is number four, self-control is number five. It's just a real quick self-analysis or self-assessment. Same thing on the end values. What five are the most important for you? Most people don't stop to think about their values, at least not in this particular society in the United States. We are too busy doing and rarely take time for reflection on our being. The next slide goes over leadership attitudes and assumptions that have to do with theory X and theory Y. Douglas McGregor is the one who first coined this, and McGregor is well known in the organization development literature, one of the founding fathers of organization development. Basically, theory X says uh, average people, the average human being dislikes dislikes work, and will do whatever they can to get out of it. Uh, Theory X also says that people have to be pushed or coerced into doing things. You have to threaten them with punishment in order to get them to do any kind of work. A third hallmark of the Theory X is that um, the average person is trying to avoid responsibility. They don't really have a lot of ambition. What they care about is security. They want people to tell them what to do. People who use this in their management style are called Theory X managers. You may have run into someone like that in your lifetime. On the other side is Theory Y. A Theory Y manager believes that uh, working is as natural as playing, that a person is self-directed and will do what they can to meet any objectives that they're committed to. A Theory Y manager believes that people not only want but seek responsibility. And rather than being told what to do, they have creativity, imagination, ingenuity. They can solve problems without being told what to do. The theory Y says that human beings only use a small fraction of their intellectual potential, that there is so much more that we can do. In leadership, we seek to be a theory Y manager or a theory Y leader. And hopefully you've run into some managers that fit that particular bill. The next section is control versus service. Are we leaders who seek control or are we leaders who exercise service? You can pause and read this um, slide. I'd like to explain this continuum of leader-follower relationships. I'll get started on this and finish up on the second segment. We have two axes in this slide. The vertical on the left is passive versus active leadership. The axis that's uh, on the bottom, the horizontal axis, is control-centered, being in the leader or the organization, versus control-centered in the follower or member of the organization. You can see the interplay between the manager and the subordinates in this particular um, graphic. We'll stop and go to the second section. 